Hey everybody, thanks for joining. My name is Ruchita and over the next couple of minutes, we are going to uncover together how to create the greatest Monday.com boards. I know, it's a very heavy topic and I'm sure that some of you had to double your coffee dose this morning because you're up all night just thinking about the answer to this question. So luckily for you, I have the answer today, but you may be asking yourselves, who is this person and do they have what it takes to be the purveyor of such wisdom like this? I, at the company, am a customer success manager. Not only am I senior in my role, I am also senior at the company. And that means that I have an excuse to talk about the olden days of Monday.com, before we had features like the calendar view. It also means that this topic is something that I have encountered a lot and it's near and dear to my heart because I've seen Monday from when it was almost at its beginnings to how impactful it is today. So these eyes have seen things. I've been around and I can tell you that something that I have heard probably the most in any session that I've had with somebody that I'm helping is how do I create the greatest board ever? And it's not always this exact wording. Sometimes people ask for a top five features that I recommend to people or ask me whether they are using all of the features correctly. Is there a way for them to use even more features on the board that they don't even know about? And as simple as monday.com is to use, I don't think the answer can be said that way. I think it's more like picking an ice cream flavor. So you guys probably remember what it's like to be at an ice cream store in person, looking in the display case and being confronted with the question, which ice cream do I get? Maybe not during quarantine, but sometime before that, even when you were younger. I think we can all say that it's never an easy decision, right? You get really overwhelmed by the colors that are there, all of the different possibilities of things that you haven't tried yet. And it's not unlike scrolling through one of our menus because you have the column center, you have that template center to get started super easily and quickly. You have the automation center that now has the ability to create custom recipes and you have different ways to see your data too. So there is all of this choice already in the equation. And that has the capacity to get overwhelming. There is a psychologist by the name of Barry Schwartz that describes something called decision paralysis. And decision paralysis is when the cognitive overload that happens when there are too many choices presented to you results in an inability to make a decision easily and subsequently results in less satisfaction with, ever, with whatever choice you made. So funnily enough, he did say that this could also happen for things as inconsequential as picking an ice cream flavor. But we know from working with boards that that's where the similarities end because picking the right features for you and your team is about your business and about the work that you do. So it's really important that we try to make the decision as easy as possible. Even though decision paralysis could describe this really well, I think a more apt term, a monday.com term, since we love to coin our own verbiage for things, is board paralysis, which is something that I see constantly. So, Typically when coming into creating a board, people think, let me examine every single option. Let me watch every single webinar. Let me look at every single knowledge base article 
And from that, I am going to create the best board ever. And this has two results. The first is people might get a little bit hesitant and they think, okay, well, there are a lot of features here. So I'm just going to create something with what I know to be the best. And maybe they create something generic, which is great and very easy to start with, but maybe your team doesn't relate to it the same way that they would otherwise. The second thing that could happen from that is somebody creates a board that has the works. So it has a little bit of everything. There are multiple board views, automations, columns. And even though this sounds good in theory, it could alienate the team. They could find it overwhelming. And in either case, you have a team that is not going to use the board that you created. So how do we make sure that our satisfaction with our decision stays the same when approaching this board dilemma, we probably need to change the question. So while the question is typically, how do I create the best board ever? The question really should be, how do I create the best board for my team? And I like this question for multiple reasons. The first is that it immediately simplifies your consideration set since at heart you're no longer thinking about hypothetically whatever the best Monday board can be. But you're putting your team first and you're thinking of specifically what your team will appreciate. The second reason that I like this question is because we can use a three-part formula in order to answer it. Are you ready to know what the formula is? Define, use, measure. It's pretty simple. This isn't an algebra class, but let's dive into it a little bit more. Let's start with what should happen before you even create the board. At this point, we want to illuminate, highlight, define, where there are gaps. I urge you to ask yourself, what are the gaps in my own team success? Next, after defining, we are ready to actually dive into the board creation. And at this point, we want to ask, how can I use the gaps that I defined previously to find the features that will close those gaps. So this concept is important because we need to know what the gaps are in order to find the key to closing them. There's a feature for every gap. There are no limits. Again, in the board creation phase, either alongside the use phase, or maybe coming right after it, we have measure. We have to look at the numbers and ask ourselves, what do the numbers show? This is a really important step. And as much as you may want to take the shortcut, just maybe very simply say define use, measure is going to become so important. And the reason is, so that you know whether the gaps that you defined are actually the ones that your team needs to close and whether the features that you chose are the ones that you need to address those gaps. So you could do this in multiple ways. So there's no excuses. You could do it by looking at what your team did before they got on the platform. So comparing a spreadsheet to comparing how things look in Monday. You can look at the boards, what the numbers say from the boards itself in terms of the number of items you have on your board. Maybe that's your output. Maybe there's a formula on your board that is indicating the total number of days something takes in order to get done. Maybe from that number, you are making a chart on your board 
in order to see the total average amount of time it takes to do something or the total output you have per contributor on your team. Even beyond that, maybe what you put together is a dashboard of different insights that you have from this gap that you uncovered, from these features that you used in order to prove to your boss, to your team lead, to whoever is a stakeholder in your process, that what you did worked for your team. And thinking about it as early as possible is something that I advocate for. I'd like to tell you about Magna in Texas who works on a team that processes claims for warranty tracking. Even though you may not be in Magna's industry, you know her struggles, you know her needs. These are the ones that she expressed to me. She said that in order to work more efficiently, they needed to share information more efficiently and they needed to process the claims that they had more quickly. So Magna definitely knew what her team needed, but you can probably see from her language that these aren't gaps, they're needs. So we still need to look at what she's saying in order to understand what's happening behind the scenes. So what I asked Magna is, okay, if your team needs to process claims more quickly, why do you think that the process of claims is happening so slowly? And if the information being shared needs to be shared more efficiently, how is it happening now? How is that communication happening now? And once we understood that, we are able to see the gaps. What Magna told me was that there are too many spreadsheets in play. Everybody has a different document and for that day where they're documenting their work and nobody has a view of the entire story. That results in things taking a little bit more time since people don't really understand the volume of work being taken on by the team and also a lack of accountability because people are just kind of minding their own business after their own work and they are not really looking to see whether there are other people on the team that they could help in order to get more processed in a given day. So based off of that, the gaps that we defined from that are visibility or lack thereof, because while people were able to get the work done with the information that they had from the documents that they had, nobody understood or had visibility into what was going on at a higher level. There was also an issue of ownership. So, people were pretty much just doing the bare minimum. It's not that they didn't want to help other people. It's just that they didn't know what other people were dealing with. They didn't have visibility into that in order to help them. In addressing this, Magna looked at the numbers the moment she knew the gaps and she tackled this by saying, let's use these features in order to close these gaps and let's measure the effects simultaneously. So for visibility, rather than having different documents for every single person, let's consolidate all of that into one board. And let's give people visibility into what other people are doing. For ownership, people come to the board knowing what they're responsible for, but let's also let them know when there are claims that are left hanging. Let's notify them so people can step up to the plate and accomplish more with the time that they have. And from that, Magna also measured the effects of those features. So she added in time tracking to make sure that 
the actual time that it was taking to process claims ended up being a lot quicker than it was in the past. She generated charts for the average response time among different people on her team so that she was able to tell and the team was able to tell, are there some people that are going about this in a quicker way or a slower way compared to the rest of the team? And then she was also able to generate reports for the total number of claims processed. Since Megna was looking at the numbers from day one, she had some interesting insights to disclose when we met again about a month after she implemented these changes. So a little bit of backstory here. What Megna told me is that proven time and again, December, January, and February are their busiest season. And they typically don't reach nearly the level of output that they do in other months that they do in December, January, and February. She could see that from last year's numbers from 2019 very easily. What she was able to report to me is that from starting to use Monday.com in March of that year, she was able to not only increase the expected amount of claims processed by 17%, but she was also able to match the output that they usually see in their busiest season. And even though the number is impressive, 17% increase in the total number of claims processed, it's not really about that because the number will look different, I'm sure, to every single person. Because she followed this process of define, use, and measure, she was able to come up with something that caused less confusion for her team and more focus so that they could get what they needed to done. Some of you may be reflecting on that story and be thinking, yeah, this is nice, but doesn't apply to me. I've been using Monday forever and I don't see a need to put myself through all of this now. What I'll say in return is that it's better to define your gaps late than never. 2020 has kind of been a wash so far, right? So you might think of this as an opportunity to reflect on what those gaps are and how to improve. And as some motivation to get you there, let me tell you about somebody I work with in New York named Walker. Walker works in a creative team, the art department specifically. And he had been using Monday.com for a couple of months, probably closer to half a year before he and I spoke for the first time. And he had a negative review. It wasn't unfounded. He, he said that the boards don't work for him and his team. They are still late on everything. And the communication didn't seem like it was particularly helpful on the platform because all of the communication that was there was essentially what they were seeing in email too. So it's kind of like just using a different platform for the same result. And to top it off, they had no visibility into what was coming down the pipeline from marketing. So how were they supposed to properly prioritize and make sure that people had the bound bandwidth to accommodate what was coming soon? So let's look at what Walker presented to me, okay? So if we take a look at this board that we have, you might be thinking to yourself, this doesn't look too bad. I mean, it has a ton of different columns. You can tell that they've put a lot of thought into what should be on this board in terms of representing their process. We have a rating column and we have a fancy formula here also that is telling us the days till the due date. But the issue is that this doesn't really address what Walker told me at all. So starting with the fact that 
people are late on everything, everything within automation that they added to the board is landing in this top group. So kind of bogging it down over time. The second thing is that communication that he mentioned. It seems like people are using the update section for something that can easily be represented automatically. And the part about knowing what's coming from marketing, well, on this board, I'm really only seeing what the art department is working on, not what they will be working on or what other teams have staked in this process in order for an asset to be marked as complete. So really what we are establishing here is that even though Walker was able to use features and measure certain things like the days till the due date, they were rendered ineffective because he didn't define what those gaps were first. And you could even say that in using the board for as long as he did, those gaps were exposed more and more over time until the point where they were inescapable because he did not use features that closed those gaps. So from that, we can see in analyzing what Walker said, not knowing what was coming for his team and not seeing the overall state of things, that's an issue with cross-team visibility. They need to be able to see what's coming from marketing and when. The second is ineffective communication. They used the update section, but they were using it exactly the way that they would use email threads, threads, threads. And there is an opportunity there to standardize that. So in working with Walker, here's what we did. The first thing that we did was pick the features that would close the gaps that we defined. So let's take cross-team visibility. That was really as simple as let's bring the other processes that are in your process or influence your process into the same board so that we have visibility into the overall life of a project rather than just the segment that relates to the art department. The second ineffective communication, let's take the opportunity to standardize that communication. So, Anything that could be said through a label, let's put that on the board so that somebody doesn't have to talk to somebody else in order to find out what's going on with that. And let's make the update section for anything that can't be said with a pre-made label. Then from there, with those two components underway, this is what Walker was able to create. So let's make it a little bit bigger. What he was able to create, and you can tell from the groups, is kind of a workflow rather than just a project list. So we could see what's coming, what's being worked on, and where those projects are that are being worked on. In terms of communication, we are thinking of communication through the lens of standardization. So anything that can be said with a label, so this is with marketing, this is with art, we are doing that on the board. We are also breaking out into additional labels so that going into these a little bit deeper, we are able to see where exactly a project is at any point in time. And that's leaving the update section available for other means of communication, maybe feedback about an asset that cannot go into a label otherwise. With this, it's also allowing them to see at a glance what might be happening with a project if it's maybe held up with another team. But admittedly, 
Walker has not tackled the measure part of the equation yet. And even though I would love for that to be in play, I am not worried about Walker. I think that it will be very easy to get into for Walker once he dedicates the time because he already has the features in play that will give him the answers that he needs. Here's what the numbers could tell Walker. What I am asking him to take a look at is how many emails are being sent out now compared to where you were a couple months ago? If it's less, then that probably means that the communication is happening more effectively in the platform. The next thing is how many days does it take to create an asset in total? And from that, he can covertly monitor this by adding in some formula columns that other people on the team can't see that assess the actual turnaround time as opposed to the estimated turnaround time. So Walker can evaluate himself as a team lead and how effective he is at forecasting for his team. The third thing that I would ask him to look at is how long do different phases take in the creation of an asset? So that way, even though it's an easy way to point fingers, you can see where do delays happen with project creation? Is it with the creative team, the art department specifically, or could it be with marketing, or could it be with legal? And now he has the ability to look at the performance insights tab on his board if he creates that as a view and he can see the total amount of time that's spent in different phases. So all of the components are there for whenever he needs it because he first defined the gaps and used features to address those gaps. To get to the best board, it's time to stop asking how to create the generically best board. Start asking, how can I use monday.com's features to close the gaps that I define? And our part of that, our job, is to ensure that there are no limits in getting you there. Thank you. Thank you.